don't even have to touch him. All he has to do is take his eyes, you know, specs off and see enough. That guy is turned on. And he goes wild. Agree or don't agree? That's why this uh, advertisement industries are flourishing with whom? Women. They want to give an ad for cigarette, they want to give an ad for a BM car, BMW, they put the BMW car there, they put the woman in a bikini and they say, try this out. Try who? The girl or the car? What are they put? Who drives a BMW? It's for guys like us. We enjoy, you know, speed thrills. Not women. We don't enjoy. Very few female men enjoy speed who are in the profession of speed. But God of us, we like that. But why put a woman? Because it sells better. Shaving, same thing. Gillette blade has got nothing to do with women. A woman comes and rubs this guy. Smooth, smooth, smooth. What's good? What are you trying to communicate to the masses of the people? Are you selling? Are you telling me about shave? I have a lot of these beautiful models coming and enough flirt, flirting with me. Is that what you're trying? No. This is what Islam. Islam is a practical religion, and it gives you practical solutions. So we have to approach each problem practically. So the result of forbidding polygamy has resulted in Hong Kong men being in a very difficult situation. And you tell me, sisters, when you get married, be your second wife, you are third or fourth, you have a legal recognition and not correct. When I take another wife, that means whatever my wife can inherit from me, whatever my first wife, children can inherit from me, my second, third and the fourth have the same and equal rights. Legally, I'm not correct. So I'm not degrading any of my wives. I'm looking after them equally. But when you talk about mistresses and concubines, you have no status in your society. And your children are the children who will grow up to be the next hardcore criminals in the society. Criminals are made because these children are given psychologically from the very young age. They go to school, the teacher is filling the form. Who's your father? The guy's like, I would also suggest you do extra research on the subject. <laughs> well, so the question is, these kind of children grow up to be psychopaths. How does it feel for you and me? Fortunately, we all have parents, we all know parents' names. Imagine you are a child, people are bullying you in the school, in colleges. You know, this guy doesn't know his father's name, man. What does that insinuate? It insinuate this boy is a bastard. I'm not correct. Islam wants to eliminate that by giving the women their rights. But marry them, look after them. That fast. And these are all the signs, it's all there, but I'll give you the practical tradition. Those who are the best believers are those who have the best manners and the most time to their families. And then the best of you is the best of the family, and I'm the best of them. That's what Prophet Muhammad saw so them said. And then general rights and general duties. Uh, to be treated with honor, kindness, and patience, which we all agree. To enjoy intimate relationship with each other, which we also agree. Allah says, God Almighty says, we have created you in pay, so you may have tranquility, intimacy, so you know, your body, you're, rela you're relaxed. So all these things is a verse from God Almighty, that He has created partners for us, and through these partners we not only procreate, but we also have our own enjoyment, which satisfies our physical and our sexual needs. To have children by God's will, procreation, that's the whole point of marriage. To keep one's legal and personal identity after marriage, retaining one's own faith, name, inheritance, and property and mahal. Mahal is the money that we give to women before we marry them in Islam. It's up to the sister who can demand whatever she wants. If I like a sister, I find her, she looks so beautiful, I propose to her, but if she says you have to give me, you know, a half of Hong Kong, if I can afford, I marry her. I said, I said, okay, sister, thank you. I can't, I can't even give you one flat, but I'm going to give you half of Hong Kong. I can move away. So that is her rights. She can demand those rights. And then general duties to be faithful to the marriage board for male and female. 
to strive to be attracted to one another. This is one of the beautiful things about Prophet Muhammad, that every time he would go into his, to meet his wife, any of his wives, at the doorstep, he would take up his toothbrush, the miswak, and he would brush his teeth, and then he would go into the house. Why? To smell good. And Prophet ﷺ was very sensitive to bad orders. If people had bad orders in their body or anything, he used to feel very uncomfortable. And he used to put so much of perfume, he used to put a lot of perfumes on himself, and he used to have collections of those. He used to be so good, even his sweat used to smell of musk. And some companions would collect that sweat and put it to mix it with other perfumes to smell better. Whether this was naturally given to him or it's because of his applying perfume, we don't. This is one of the miracles that prophets are doing. They smell good. And smelling good in Islam is one of the virtue, uh, one of the good qualities of a Muslim. You have to smell good. Now that you go to the mosque and you smell full of onion, or you have it all oh, smell, somebody tells your brother, get a deodorant, please. Right? So you don't do that. And then to assist and support one another and to resolve disputes. In Islam, Prophet's wife tells us as soon as he comes home, he will help the Prophet's wife in the housework. Cleaning, doing this, or looking after the animals, feeding them, you know, washing the dishes, something he would do. So in Islam, we can't say this work is for women. Matter of fact, in Islam, like you don't have to give the part of your earning, you are not required to even serve your husband food. You can simply tell him, get up. You want food, you get it from the restaurant. She can say that. She don't have to wash his clothes. She don't have to clean the house. These are not her obligations. These are not even her duties in the house. But she does it out of the love. She does it because she has to do to make the family a better place for her husband. She don't have to massage you as soon as you come home because you're very tired. You know? She don't have to talk to you sweet. Yes, talk to you. All these things, you do good towards each other, you're being rewarded. For every good act, God rewards you back. And then, the husband has a duty to provide all the physical maintenance of the family, housing, clothing, food, medical care, etc., etc., etc. This is upon him. And then, finally, of course, marriage has its good things and it has its shortcomings. Because we are two different entities, husband and wife, coming together to live under one roof with understanding and compromises. That's what marriage is all about. It's all about giving and taking understanding each other. Like my father used to always give me an, a, an example of husband and wife. Husband and wife are like two tracks of a train. They are apart, but they stay apart so the train, which is a family, moves smooth. So husband and wife are like two tracks of the train, but the family has to move. We have our own priorities. Yes, as a man, I have my own stuff. As a woman, she's got her own stuff, her likes and dislikes. But when it comes to family, we compromise. So problems are inevitable in marriages. Couples are bound to face difficulties and get frustrated with one another from time to time. But this frustration, alhamdulillah, will bring you greater love, inshallah. Allah wills, it brings you greater love. And for all you who believe, uh, it is not lawful for you to inherit women by compulsion. You can't inherit women by compulsion. When you marry them, it's out of their willingness to live with you for the rest of their life. Because as a wife, she is a committed, companion for a man. Prophet said, your wives are com committed, they're committed to you, to serve you, so honor them, respect them, provide for them. And then, and uh, I do not make difficult for them in order to take back part of what you have given them unless they commit a clear immorality and live with you, with them in kindness, for it is, if you dislike them, perhaps you dislike something God has put good in you. There is a something good in your wife, maybe things you don't like about her, but be patient. At any time, when the other sisters ask me, you know, my husband is not doing this, my husband is transgressing, I say, look, there must be something good about him. Talk about it. Every man has got his own shortcomings. Some men are short tempered. You know, some men are aggressive. By nature, they're just aggressive. So don't just talk about his problem, but there must be something good about him. And then if you still don't find anything good with the man, Demand your rights with Allah, with God. And you just tell your husband to be cautious about God calling you for nakah. You see, Omar, the second caliph of Islam, when he was a ruler, 
he feared even the animals may speak against him on the day of judgment. Because when you are the ruler, you have to make sure people are given their due rights and the animals are given their due rights. So sometimes he used to look at these animals and say, what if this animal come against me on the day of judgment and say, I was under this man's rule and he didn't provide for me. You see, the sense of responsibility is now put upon every human shoulder. Not only for your own family you are responsible, your family you are responsible for the society that you live in as a whole. Because each individual are made by the society and the society is made by us. So we can't be selfish and just say as long as I live happy I don't care. I can't do that. Islam you can't do that. So there might be something good in your wives so don't dislike them. And prophetic tradition finally says one only a man of noble character will honor a woman, which is true. A man with a good honor, good character will always honor the woman he's going to get married to. And only a man with base, evil, intent, immoral conduct will dishonor them. And then, shall I tell you what the best object of your charity is? Object of your Prophet Muhammad asks his people, can I tell you something that is the best of charity? He said, it, it is your own daughter who has returned to you as a widow or a divorcee and who has no one to earn for her except you. So if you have a daughter who comes back to you and the husband is dead or she's been divorced, you think about it and look after her. Because at the end of the day, she is your daughter. Don't try to play, you know, uh, playing games. Oh, it's because of you, your husband left. Oh, it's because of you, your husband died. No, we don't know. Things happen. In, in, a, in a Muslim life, it happens. But a Muslim is made to take everything positively. You can't change what has already happened, but you can amend what is going to happen. Right, so this is the whole subject. Uh, this is a conclude that our praise is due to God, and I do apologize if I took too much of the time. Now I leave it for your platform to raise questions. You know, we have any. Yes, sir. Just now my question on why always we are okay. hearing the worship is men. Okay. You see, the sister was asking an earlier question because before Pastor the sister the brother came and I posed a question to the participants, the attendees, what is your view about women in Islam? So they gave the views. So that sister was saying every time she passed by this masjid, she saw more men coming out of the masjid and she hardly saw women coming out of the masjid. Why is this? Number one, Again, men are instructed to pray in the mosque, in the congregation. And this instruction is much relaxed when it comes to assistance. Right? Why? Number one, a woman has to look out of the children in the house, have to cook for the husband, get things ready. So for her to come five times a day to the mosque and go back is very difficult. Practically speaking, it's difficult. So Prophet Muhammad said, if you can pray in, the, in your house, in a hallway, it's more preferable for you to pray in your house than to go to the mosque. You get the same reward. Imagine men have to wake up, dress up, perfume ourselves to smell good in a congregation. You, know, you don't want to go smell bad. And you have to prepare, you walk maybe for 200 meters before you reach the mosque, whether it be early morning prayer, late night prayer, whatever it is. and then. You get your reward for each step you take, you know, there's 27, 26 rewards you take. You have for every step a Muslim take. But for the sisters, you just have to make your evolution in the house, turn around, say your prayer. And you still get your 26 reward. So Prophet Muhammad said it's preferable that you pray in a hallway. It's even preferable if you pray in the room. Right? It is encouraged because this thing came up when the, one of the female in the, one of the female companion of the Prophet asked this question before Prophet, how are we to come to the mosque? Five times a day when we have children to cater, animals to feed, house to clean. When men don't have all that, right? We don't have all that. Generally speaking, you don't see men cook. It's usually women who take the joy of cooking, despite the fact men are also getting good cooks nowadays. Huh? One of the top chefs in the world are men. So but in general, we are speaking, it's women who does that. In general, who cleans the diapers of the child? Women. Men don't do that. 
it would be nice if you guys can get a good husband who can take the baby and clean the baby up. But very rarely you see men who can do that. Right? These, these things, these are not equipped for us. That's what Prophet said. That's why you don't see many sisters maybe in the daylight. But if you come towards the last prayer, you will see a lot of sisters. They will come, they will take the children for the Quran class here. They stay here, they will chit chat with their own you know, groups and then after pray they all leave. But during the room prayer, yeah, they are not prohibited. They, they can freely come and pray. It's your right. <coughs> but there is a flexibility given to you which is not given to me. That's why I said Islam is more of a feminist religion. It's more for the sisters than for the men. But we are taught, imagine Prophet said, paradise lies in the feet of your mother. Look at the honor a woman has. The first woman who embraced Islam was a woman, Hadija. Before even Prophet himself believed in the message, his wife believed in it. Comforted, told him things that no God will not betray, blah, 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 all that. <coughs> the first woman to be martyred, the first person to be martyred was a woman, Sumayya. The first scholar of the Islamic uh, teachings was a woman, Aisha. How many innovations? She was a university on her own self. She had 80 students who came to learn from her. The first woman to migrate for the sake of God from Mecca was a woman to ever seen. The first person in the Quran where God says, I have selected you, purified you, chosen you above the women of all nations is who? The mother of Jesus Christ, another woman. Imagine, see, if you, if you speak, this, when, when men, when community is based on this kind of ethics, imagine how your father will be with you. Imagine how your brothers will be with you. Imagine how it is. It is mind blowing the way Islam treats women. It's amazing, so beautiful. You know, it, it, it made men think. And look at women as someone who is doing so much for the society and the house, often men forget. This is our nature. We don't appreciate it. Prophet Muhammad taught us to always appreciate what people do for you. Because he said the one who can't show gratitude to a fellow human being can never be grateful to God. So you should show gratitude to people who you physically you touch, you feel, you see. Then you talk about your gratitude and your relationship to God. Imagine, I'll just finish with this, this question. Praying tahajjud, is not a late night prayer. Generally for Muslims, it is preferable. Late night prayer. Muslims who want to communicate to God, want to ask Him anything, they usually wake up in the third or the second portion of the night and pray. This is for us, is sunnah, the method of the Quran. But for the Prophet, this was compulsory. He had to wake up every single day leaving his sleep and he has to pray. Even while he had to do this under the instruction of, the, of God Almighty himself, before he went to pray, he would ask permission from his wife, Aisha. He said, yeah, Aisha, can I go pray now? It's time for me to go pray. And she would say, yes, please. Look at the kindness. You don't have to ask. I'm not correct. You don't have to ask. This is between him and God. He can simply say, who of woman? i got something to do with you. But he understood this valuable time is Aisha's time. And I'm taking from her time to devote myself to the Creator. So he seeks her permission. If you read about how Prophet Muhammad was, you will find there is not a greater person who is so romantic as this man was on the face of this globe. The Julia, all this stuff, you know, there's a Shakespeare novel, will all, it's, it's rubbish. Because end of the day, both of them died. Alright. So that's not a happy ending. But Prophet Muhammad, despite having so many wives, not a single one of them have a complaint about him. That is a true challenge. I can come here, talk to you so sweet, so nice, so beautiful, so you may think I'm, oh, this guy is awesome. But as soon as you go hear from my wife's statements, he said, this man, oh, this man is horrible. He doesn't provide, he doesn't come on time, he doesn't spend time with the kids. So uh, the statement given by my wife 
is a true statement. So how I live in my house is very important. And the way Prophet lived in his house and in the public was the same. That's why Aisha says he was the living Quran. He, everything about him was very beautiful. When one occasion somebody asked Aisha, his wife, after the demise of the Prophet passed away, many years of God, young companions, the children of the companions, they came to Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. They said, Oh Aisha, which of the act you love the most from the Prophet? She wondered, she said, everything about this man was beautiful. Of course she was in tears when people asked this question because she's missing her husband now. Am I right? When somebody comes to you and asks you about your mother, maybe your mother died 15 years ago, for one moment the tears will start flowing out. So she was in tears. She said, everything about this man was beautiful. However, there was one act that I loved the most of all. She said, at night, he will depart from his bed and he will stand up to talk to the community. That is something that stands out. A wife giving that statement is amazing. Right? So this is how a Muslim have to try and live. It is a struggle. To perfect your conduct is, is a struggle. It said a certain things easily said, but it's not easily done. But you have to mold it. You keep on mold. It's like a knife. You sharpen it. Every time you sharpen it, it gets sharper. So your manners have to sharpen. You read about it, you try to practice. And it's a blessing. Then you will realize why God says the Quran is a mercy on man. Because every verse in the Quran in itself is a mercy to me. Hope that answers your questions. Anything else? So the shooting of the uh, Pakistan leader of Malala was totally <laughs> against the uh, belief yes, and, uh, definitely. of the uh, Islam. You see, what I don't, what really puts me curious about the whole scenario is one girl, somebody shot her. We never heard of this person before. If she was a revolutionist in her age, we must have heard about her long time ago. Before the shooting, people would say, oh, this girl is so amazing, man. She's fighting for women's rights, blah, blah, blah. But out of the blue, this girl comes up. And people say they shot her in the head, and this was Taliban. We, don't, we can't even testify to that. No counter you know, reference to make that confirm the report, number one. Number two, how many children in America killed? How many infants in America killed in Iraq occupation? Any of you know? Two million children. Infants. Infants. Because of malnutrition and lack of vaccinations. And the bombs. And the bombs. Two million. In Gaza. In Gaza every day. And we don't even have, we have no record. It just every day children are dying like, uh, uh, dying like uh, falling leaves. So I'm very suspicious, very skeptic about why are they making this girl so popular for what? What are they trying to tell the world? Why out of the blue this woman becomes so famous? Because being famous is a gradual process, right? Everybody you see, they have gone through some struggle and then we hear about them and then they become popular. Once they become so popular, then maybe somebody's trying to shoot them. This kid, they don't have to shoot her. All they have to do is go to the family and threaten them is good enough. And she's in Pakistan, right? And in Pakistan, women can go to school. Yes, sir. And for your information, yes, there are more PhD holders yes. in Pakistan, female PhD holders in Pakistan than the whole of America put together. This is something you will not hear in the mass media because they don't want to tell you all that. Because to them, a Muslim woman is someone who is completely veiled, put in the corner of the house, you know. She's something like a, it's like abandoned dog. That's how they want to give you the image of Muslim women. But in truth, you ask any sister who became a Muslim, the kind of honor, the kind of respect she gets in the society. When she wears this Islamic hijab, when she walks into any congregation, you will see the respect she gets. For any sister who is married to a husband, don't have to go to work, she can sit at home, 
you know, like our brother said, he goes home at 9 o'clock, his wife said, honey, go get me rice, there's no rice in the house, I have to go back. Look at the kind of respect our woman carry in the house. They are the queens in the house. <laughs> I'm talking like a king to you here, right? As soon as I go home, I'm like a servant over there. Okay, no, I'll do it fine. This is how, this is how we stand because I have to honor her with, because that's how I have taken her in marriage, that I will look after her. So when I take her in marriage from her family, I tell her family that I will try my best to look after your daughter as much as I can. And I'll provide for her and I'll try. So all these things is very suspicious, very suspicious. And they have to take her to the UK. I don't know why. In Pakistan, we've got very good doctors. Brother, I'm from Pakistan. I'd like to add to your city. You know, uh, I come from a city. Um, I went to a co ed school. Uh, my sister and my entire family, they're well educated. Um, I think what happens sometimes is uh, you know, a standalone incident or even a misguided soul. You know, it doesn't truly represent, uh, you, and you as a critical thinker should think about it, it does not represent the masses. They, it might be that if I, being a Muslim, go and shoot someone, does that mean that Islam as a religion is saying that I should go shoot someone? Or is that, does that mean that me as an individual, you know, I, I did something that I shouldn't have? So, uh, yes, the brother's question here about, uh, you know, it, that what happened with Malala, it was very unfortunate. And whoever did it, someone did it. Now, whatever the story might be behind it, whatever the reason, it was that someone or that group, if there was any group, who were, held, who were to be held responsible for trying to take the life of an innocent. It, you, cannot, you cannot label that as uh, generalized Islam. That's absolutely, uh, I would not agree. And but with the uh, occupation of the Taliban in Afghanistan in 1996, are you skeptical of the reports of that? Do you believe that it's true that the status of women in Afghanistan after, after the occupation was de degraded? Now for this, I need to give you a clear view of how did the whole Taliban came together. A lot of us, including the Muslims themselves, have no clue. They think Taliban are some old tribal leaders in the damn horseback with a long turban, with a long beard, with a sword and a gun. No. The word Taliban is a Pushtu word. In Arabic, we have the similar word, Talib, right? Talib means students. In Pushtu, Taliban means group of or band of students. Learners. Yeah, learners. People who are academics, in other words i tell you how Taliban came into place. Russia tried to occupy Afghanistan for 20 years. Why they wanted Russia? Why Russia wanted Afghanistan so much? And they're ready to invest so much of money and life into it. You know why? Because of the natural resources they have. But however, they will tell you, no, 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 it's not that. It's because we were scared the Muslims will dominate and they will take over the Europe. George Perlow also made it very clear that Islam will dominate and Islam will rule over Europe in the next hundred years. That's what George Perlow also said. Not through armed force, through internet. Islam happens to be the fastest growing religion on the face of this earth, which the Western, Western countries are scared of. Like Noam Chomsky. Have you heard of this man? Noam Chomsky is a linguistic and a, an economist and he's a political analyst, a great thinker who by nature is a Jew. My birth is a Jew, is a Jew. He says in one statement, it is not the radical Islam the best fears. Rather, they fear the passion behind Islam. It's not the radical Islam they fear. The radical can be eliminated very shortly and become a very small number. It's a ration behind. The, re the reasoning Islam puts before men is what America fears. Because they can't compete with the reasoning. So the Russian army went in to control the resources which they failed. They failed. After 20 years of war with these people, these people are born warriors. You and I, as soon as we learned to walk, our parents gave us pen and paper to write. For them, they were given guns. 
because they had no structure. Everything was destroyed already. So fight. Fight for your motherland if you have to, you know, tomorrow children have to live independently. So they fought and they left. So when America wanted to occupy them, before they did that, how many allegations they put on the Taliban? And the formation of Taliban is group of university students. One of the girls from the university was kidnapped. From the university, a girl was kidnapped by some tribal lord heads, was taken to their tribe. So these boys came together, they said, we have to ambush this tribe and bring the girl back. So at night, they marched, they went into the tribe, took the girl and gave her back. And this put them in the map. Now they realize the students, the power they had. Oh, we have the power to change Afghanistan, to regulate properly, to put Islamic Sharia here, to show the world what Islamic Sharia means, and to regulate according to the teachings of the Divine God. So they grouped, and this group of men became the governments. You see, so it is not some, some dumb head. Some intellig intelligence came together to form the government. They formed the government. As soon as they found the government, the first thing they controlled was crime. What crime? The crime of harvesting drugs. And who was the one who benefited from the drugs? USA. US government has invested enormous amount with these farmers to plant drugs and sell it back to US. So they can pump all these drugs into Latin America. So the American government did not like that. They said, who is this small band of boys who have actually put an embargo, destroyed all the plantation of drugs, and spoiled our income? So since then, the Taliban came to the Western headlines. Taliban government abusive to women. They don't allow women to go to work. Have you heard this? You know what is the story behind it? I'll tell you what's the story. Yes. The Taliban government did not impose any law on women from going to work. They told the sisters, they said, look, men in Islam have to provide for the family, not women. And there are so many men out there who can't find a job. And they have their families dependent upon them. So why don't you sisters excuse your profession, give it to them, so your husbands who are already working can provide for you. So this brother can take over your position in the university, in the school, in any profession, he's qualified. And then through that source of employment, he brings his to the family. This is what they did. So instead of putting it that way, the media published the other way. Oh, women are banned from going to work. This is one. I'm telling you how they manipulate information. Second, the destruction of the Buddha temple, the Buddha statue. Taliban gave in to the power in 1996, am I correct? Yeah. And when did they destroy the Buddha statue? 1998. Or oh, somewhere in 2000? No. 1999. 1999. 99. So 96, 97, 98. So three years, why did they do the destruction? And they tried to play this dirty game as they always do. They associated destroying the Buddha statue with Islam. They said, look, if Islam comes, all your churches will be destroyed, all your monasteries will be destroyed, this is how Muslims will behave. The fact of the matter is, polio drops, this is where the issue is. You know polio drops? Every, children, every child in the world is given polio drops. It's a vaccination. And who gives it to the world? Free, of course. Japan. Even in Hong Kong, when